Um, I've been asked to make a few remarks and I'll be very brief because I know the cabinet secretary is running to go to another meeting. But um, just before I make a few remarks, I just want to start by thanking the, our partners who have made this possible. I want to start by uh, thanking the Nation Media Group management for having this idea to try and bring us all together. And also the Chamber of Commerce for putting this, the first Congress for the, for the, for the SMEs. Because as you all know, SMEs play a very important role in the lives of Kenyans and everybody, in, and, and everybody together. So I want to say that uh, the SMEs are very important for the social and economic, uh, for social and economic reasons, uh, given the sectors that they, 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 they play in. I think when you come to think about the SMEs, they are in everywhere. They are from banking to financial services to agribusiness to juakali to anything that you can think about. Just about anybody who is employed actually in one or the other either starts as an SME, nobody actually starts as a corporate. And therefore, the, the other aspect of the SMEs is just that uh, it's the sector that actually provides most of the jobs. I think during the course of the day, you'll be hearing a lot of statistics as to the role that the, the SMEs play. But I think generally it is good to say that, for instance, um, that uh, the, the SMEs space, for instance, in last year, I think they contributed more than 40% of all the jobs that we are created in Kenya. Not only in Kenya, but also across the region and in Africa, SMEs contribute more than 80% of all the jobs available across Africa. And therefore, the conversation we should be having is if indeed this is the kind of sector that provides the bulk of all the employment, and remembering that, in fact, one of the key things that the government tries to do is to provide employment for the youth. This is a sector that clearly we as a people need to focus in and we need to support in. So I'm very happy about uh, the Chamber of Commerce and the Nation Media Group for bringing this together because this is an area where we need to have a conversation uh, around. Let me also say another reason why I think anybody who is senior, whether you are a CEO or whether you are senior cabinet minister or whether you are whatever position you occupy in the government, I would like to tell you one of the reasons why you should care about what happens in the, in the, in the SME sector. Because everybody who has worked anywhere, in the end you end up in the SME sector. Because when you have retired, make no mistake, you're not going to retire and go and set up a corporate. When you retire, you're going to go and set up an SME. I can testify to that because after working for close to 40 years in the corporate world, when I retired, where did I retire to? I retired into SME. I'm a farmer. I grow, I grow crops. I grow, I grow flowers for export and so on. And I, therefore, I, I know firsthand how just challenging it is to work in the SME space. So I'm telling our chief guest here, when you retire, we'll welcome you to our SME sector. We'll show you, <laughs> we'll show you where to begin and what to do, and also then you'll be able to appreciate when some of the things that will be coming here across about some of the challenges that the SME sectors face. You'll be able to, to do something about them. At least, Mr. Kaplan Secretary, you are now in a position where you can influence policy which can actually help a lot of people. And by helping those a lot of people, you'll also be helping yourself when you ret finally retire and come into, into the private sector. Uh, according to the recent CBK report, the informal sector where most of the SMEs lie constitute about 28% of the, all the businesses in Kenya. That's a huge number. And I think it's much more than that because a lot of people in the, in the informal sector, they're not even captured in the national statistics. The guy who is selling mandazi by the roadside, the guy who is hawking on the street and so on, they, they don't even get captured in the, national, in the national statistics. So probably the figure could be higher than that. And uh, in Africa also, uh, SMEs create over 80% of all the employment. So I think we need, this is a good time for us to have a conversation 
because if the, uh, if the intent of the government is to improve the quality of life of the people, then it has to start by providing them with, with useful uh, jobs and so on, and this is why we need to have this, uh, this space. Statistics also show that, um, I think it was last year or the year before, they said out of 400,000 SMEs or informal jobs, uh, informal companies that we have formed, over 400,000 of them did not leave to see their second uh, anniversary. So the mortality of, of, uh, of uh, SMEs is very, very high. And I hope in the next two days we'll be having a conversation around why is there such a high mortality of SMEs. And I think I'll just mention maybe some of the challenges that these people have. And, uh, but before I, I do that, this is, uh, I would like to say that uh, in this SME space, it is where we are going to create the jobs for their youth. And there could be no better distribution mechanism of wealth and resources rather than through this sector. Politically, I want to say this. If we don't fix unemployment and the idleness in our youth, the initiatives we are taking, political systems, other interventions and so on, they'll actually come to naught because we have to fix the employment of our youth. Hungry and idle youth will not be interested in the current political system that we are having. And I think one of the problems that we have is that I think as Kenyans we are over preoccupied with politics and most of those is toxic politics which do not actually help to create the kind of enabling climate that is helpful for the business to thrive. I don't want to sound as pessimist, but I think we are sitting on a time bomb. Unless we fix the job creation, and one of the ways of doing this is the kind of things that we are talking about, then I don't think we are sitting uh, very pretty. I also want to say that uh, as somebody also who, who sits in the corporate space, let us admit that we don't have jobs for our students coming from the universities or technical colleges or even high school. At least they are not in insufficient numbers. The one place these people can have the jobs is in creating their own jobs and also for, uh, joining the SME sector. So I think this is just critically important and um, I apologize for keeping on harping about why we really need to support and look after the, 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 the sector because I think the whole future of our country uh, 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 depends on that. So I think we also need to tell our youth that rather than waiting to come and work for a bank or for an institution or for the government, let us see how we can empower them so that they can actually be self-employed and employ others. So let me just briefly just outline some of the challenges that we hope the Bonasiers you can take to your cabinet colleagues uh, in terms of perhaps understanding some of the challenges the SME sector face. The first one, and I think which contributes to the high mortality of the SMEs, is the unfriendly regulatory policies. I think our policies are not good, they are not friendly, they are very cumbersome. You try to set up a business in Kenya and it takes forever. You go to Rwanda and you can set up a business within a day or two. And I think the regulatory framework needs to be looked at so that it can be very facilitative for the business to grow. Lack of capital or lack of uh, affordable finance is also another key one. I think uh, we have been hearing this debate about the banks and about the capping of the interest rates, which has now been removed, luckily. But despite that, what has happened is that the SME sector, at least the majority of them, are still not accessing the capital. And the reason for this, uh, they have now been reduced to going and borrowing on the mobile platforms which again is very, very expensive. It's like fly, um, uh, jumping from the frying pan into the fire. Uh, when the banks were charging 13, 14%, we thought it was expensive or even 20%. But within the digital platform, where most of them are now borrowing, they are borrowing anything up to 300% per annum when you annualize you know, these people. Because the people, the kind of people I'm talking about are people who need to borrow 5,000 bob today to go and buy the stock which they sell and then come and repay the loan the following day, and they are charged maybe six or seven percent for a day's or two days borrowing. When you analyze that, it's quite high. So there's need to look at that to see how the people in this sector can access finance in an affordable way. 
it's a complicated issue, but I think with determination and commitment, we should be able to find a way. Because if, unless we find a way of financing the, this sector, we are not going to, to, be, to, to be going very far. The other third one that I think the, uh, the SMEs uh, uh, challenge they face is also lack of managerial uh, capacity and, and, and the skills. And I think a lot of corporates, I would like to, to suggest that a lot of corporates can help in mentorship and also telling people about the financial literacy and things like that so that people who are starting their businesses, they would know how to look after them. The, the competitiveness of our goods is also an issue, uh, partly because our cost of production is very high, and that has anything to do with our high cost of energy, lack of water, and lack of infrastructure, among, among others. The other thing I can also mention is the high taxes. Yeah, the, the taxes are high. When you look at both from the, from the whatever it is called, the, 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 the corporate taxes and other taxes that they're trying to introduce them, I don't think Kenya has a uh, tax and uh, friendly environment and uh, when, when, when you look at um, an organization which even making a profit of 20,000 20, or 20 million is still taxed. I, I don't think that, that really helps very much. The biggest one I think that the, 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 the SMEs face is harassment by the county governments. In Nairobi, Naskia, Mambaya, Kajo, you know, it is a cat and mouse game from from morning till evening, and uh, and I think we, we we look at our our SMEs as if they are a nuisance rather than a driver to our to our economy, and finally, what I see is actually the huge corruption in national and county governments that uh, owes SMEs hundreds of million, billions of shillings in unpaid bills, and this is really crippling. The operations because you know the cash flow become an, an, an issue and I already talked about the toxic politics that don't create a, 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 a good environment so I would like to therefore end by saying let us purpose to mobilize and support the informal sector of the SME sector through simplification of regulation favorable cross-border tax agreements and removal of non-tariff barriers in other words, let us create a business-friendly environment for SMEs to grow. Let us also commit to, all, to do all we can to help SMEs graduate from micro to small to medium and then maybe eventually to corporates. And we have good, got good examples of this. We have seen com companies which have started small and have actually ended up being big corporates and I think we need to do that. And finally, I think we want to also say that uh, let us also encourage entrepreneurs to enter into the manufacturing in key areas, uh, strategic areas. I'll just give two examples. One is everybody in this room is wearing shoes. And I like to think that uh, most of them are leather shoes. Leather shoes are things that we can actually produce here. There were Maasai and all those guys in the pastoral area. They, 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 all they, are, they do is, is, is raise cows. Those skins, if they are done properly, if they are treated properly, if they are harnessed properly, they can make shoes. And it's not just shoes, even handbags for ladies, all kinds of things, wallets, the whole lot of them. From one cow, you can make a lot of money. But what does the Maasai poor Maasai get from a cow? Maybe 20, 30,000. Whereas, in fact, from uh, value addition, you can end up maybe making several million shillings from that cowhide uh, if we can do that. that. That's just an example. Everybody here is wearing clothes. Yeah? But the, most of the clothes we are wearing from here are either from China, Korea, or whatever it is. None of them is done in Kikomi. Why are we not able? And this is not really high, high technology. These are just simple things that if we purpose to do them, we can actually do them. It can create a lot of a lot of a lot of jobs for the people, from the, right from the people who are going to grow the cotton, to people who are going to market the cotton, to people who are going to process that cotton, to the people who are going to be employed in factories that make these shirts and suits and ties and handkerchiefs and whole lot of them that we do. There is no reason for our people to be selling other people's mitumbas when they can be selling our own new mitumbas here. If we if we purpose and 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 employ millions of people, so. The final point, final, final, is also, I think we need also to think without the box. Because if you look at some of our 
major, major crops economic drivers in agribusiness. Agribusiness constitutes close to 40% of the GDP in this country. And when, but when you look at the two crops which I'll talk about, coffee and tea, there's no big science, there's no big technology that is required to actually value add and actually sell it rather than how we have uh, uh, marketed our, these two commodities through auctions which are dominated by cartels and, uh, and the crooks and the farmer actually ending up getting nothing. We need to think how we can actually streamline those ones through value addition and so on. And you can do the same for fruits, the whole lot of them. So I want to stop there and say that um, at Nation Media Group, we are, ve we, we are very happy to, to help um, in this discussion. We will uh, continue to uh, work with the like people, like-minded people, and we like to think that this will become an annual event. Let this be the beginning. Let be this be the beginning of the conversation where we can say, as Kenyans, how can we transform this country? And we can transform this country through the kind of people who are sitting here. Let us encourage them because this is the future. There is no country in the world that will grow without a, a, a solid manufacturing base. And you know this is one of the, one of the arms, that, that, that one of the pillars that the, the, the Jubilee government is looking for. Those pillars are not going to come from the big corporates. They are going to come from these people here. So let us give them every support they can. And I'm hoping that the next two days will give us the opportunity to have that uh, conversation so that uh, next year it will be even a bigger and better one. And hopefully we'll have uh, b nice stories to tell of companies which came here, they listened, they took something, they interacted with one another, and they also graduated to corporates. I thank you so much and thanks so much CS for coming because we now know the government is taking this issue seriously. Your presence here means a lot to us. We know that whatever we'll tell you, and you'll be hearing a lot from what, the, what is ailing this sector, I know it will go to the uh, highest office in this land, and we trust that something will happen. I thank you so much. Let us clap for the chairman again, yeah? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Alfred Kiboro, the Chairman of National Media Group. I think if you look at the business daily today, there's statistics from our last census which says that 39% of the youth are unemployed. That's about 5.3 million uh, of the youth. And there's also a point that he said, and I'd like to ask everyone to look around himself or herself and ask yourself, what is around you that is made in Kenya? He talked of buy Kenya, build Kenya. That's the first and the best way we are going to build our SME sectors. So next on stage is the president of uh, the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, Mr. Richard Ngatia. We receive his comments. He's one of our key partners in this initiative. Panangatia, Karibu. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Our chief guests, Dr. Fred Otiengi, Ministry of Interior and Coordination, uh, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Chairman of the Nation Media Group, Dr. Fred uh, Kiboro, Wilfred Kiboro. Uh, let me stand on the protocols uh, that exist but also wish you uh, a great morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm very excited uh, this morning because I think this is one of the first days or first times that we have a consultative uh, meeting between uh, uh, and dialogue between the government, uh, the private sector, SMEs to see and find ways of how we can get solutions so that we can be able to uh, provide a conducive environment for all of us uh, to, to work in. And therefore, I really uh, thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to start by commending the government, the Nation Media Group, for teaming up with us and other stakeholders to organize this inaugural SME Forum. It is an excellent opportunity for government, the private sector, and international organizations to network, share information, and collaborative in developing the private sector in Kenya. And also, uh, very excited that uh, they, uh, the organizations, the government, have now partnered with the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Our organization was formed in uh, 1965, and since that time, we have been uh, our mandate uh, is uh, three, uh, we, three pillars. Uh, one is uh, networking, advocacy, and uh, trade uh, facilitation. And uh, since, ever since, we have been uh, providing conducive environment for the SMEs and MSMEs, and of course, uh, looking for uh, access to, to, to markets as well. Now, the importance of SMEs in economic development, uh, just to share with you briefly, there is an increasing recognition of the importance of SMEs in supporting overall economic growth in the country. It is no secret that the SMEs play a major role in spurring economic development, like you've heard from uh, the speaker who was here before. And today, uh, governments where have begun to ask themselves what they can do to encourage the growth of SMEs, thus enabling them to contribute to the national economy. SMEs are a very vital component of the economy, given uh, their substantial share in national employment and gross domestic product. Policy makers as well and development uh, practitioners perceive them as major instruments for poverty reduction and inclusive economic growth. They are an engine of growth and innovation. Many SMEs begin life as startups before scaling up into market leaders. Successful SMEs oft, often venture overseas, braving new challenges in searching for fresh markets and opportunities. And that is why many governments today are focused on helping SMEs grow by providing them with the right environment, institutions, and programs to enter new markets, develop, and be competitive. And like uh, Dr. Uh, Wilfred Kiboro said, it is important that today we observe and embrace new technology and of course we want to look at uh, the digital economy where our youth can also benefit and also showcase uh, their talent and unlock uh, their potential. Now the challenges in the sector of SMEs that is despite their contribution and importance SMEs today face key challenges in doing business both business environment the regulatory environment that governs the cost of doing business, and farm-specific factors, entrepreneurship, skills, access to credit, and markets tend to affect the life cycle growth profiles of farms in different countries. Some of the challenges the sector faces are as follows. One is lack of comprehensive and well-coordinated policy measures for SME development as the regulat uh, regulations tend to favor large enterprises. And I think this is the reason we are here today, so that we see how we can engage the government so that whenever they are formulating policies, then we can be able to be favored, leading to the lack of conducive business environment of SMEs, thus high entry cost and high operation cost for SMEs. Two is second, uh, limited supportive institutions for SMEs such as business development services agencies, credit information bureau, and SME business information center, uh, and so on and so forth. Limited knowledge and support for SMEs on business continuity and survival is also a key challenge that we face today. Now the proposed national SME policy direction, Kenya is currently undertaking key reform programs in the SME space to chart entrepreneurship and improve sector competitiveness. And to achieve this, we propose the lowering of regulatory barriers to trade that will further increase the potential for SMEs, promote standardization of trade procedures, the removal of tariff and non-tariff barriers, and the improvement 
of regulatory frameworks will be an additional enabling factor. This will not only provide SMEs with a level uh, playing field in conducting uh, businesses, but will also maximize the competitive advantage in the economies. As private sector players, we will be happy to see the SME policy that captures the characteristics and performance of SMEs and entrepreneurship, facilitating entrepreneurship among women and youth, scaling up microenterprises, and generating more medium-sized firms, and increasing SME activity on foreign markets. And that's where, as the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce come in, our team is here today to engage you. We have our board directors who are here to engage you as well. And through our desk of economic diplomacy, any foreign trade, then you'll be able to be facilitated. Now, going forward, the chamber will take on these specialized roles while continuing to serve the wider community of SMEs in Kenya and improving the business environment to facilitate entry, retention, and exit of enterprises. I would encourage entrepreneurs to take full advantage of the opportunities that will be offered by upcoming policy to help them achieve their dreams and ideas. When government and the private sector join hands and work together, they can have a major impact on diversifying economies and promoting inclusive growth. This event today and tomorrow is a real step forward in our efforts to take on this challenge. I'm very pleased that so many different institutions are gathered at this conference today. I am certain the impressive panels and workshops you have ahead of you will produce important insights to inform our future work. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a really exciting agenda for the next two days with speakers from different sectors discussing a wide range of topics. I am absolutely certain you will have incentive and fruitful discussions. Now, it's important also just to mention that as we prepare for the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, our commencement of trading, which is uh, slated for 1st July 2020, so we need to have a conversation on how we as Kenya, how, how as SMEs we can be able to plug in. Now, the effect of also the coronavirus, which is a concern today, Kenya has been marked as one of the countries that are most vulnerable to the impact of these coronavirus and effects, which are economic impacts, flights banned, uh, affects uh, modality of people and uh, uh, goods uh, as well. So those are the conversations that today we uh, will have, including uh, discussions on how we can be able to take advantage of opportunities that are available within the uh, blue economy. Uh, we see how our youth, women in business, youth in business, how we can be able to create jobs for them in that uh, sector uh, in terms of maritime, logistics, and also to explore more on the products or uh, the fish that we can be able to export out. We will also be discussing the opportunities available in the orange economy, which has been emphasized by Dr. Wilfred Kiboro. We want to look at fashion. We want to see how we can give, provide you opportunities to partner with brands that can come and also unlock your potential and also to be able to maximize on your profits within the sector of uh, orange economy and of course uh, textile. And not forgetting also the green uh, economy as well. Very importantly, again, just to remind you, we need also to look at uh, embrace, embracing innovation, technology. Let us see how also we can plug in within the big four agenda of the government. Let us see the opportunities uh, the SME can also benefit uh, from the, you know, the affordable housing. Uh, we see what opportunities we can also benefit and how we can also advise and also work together with uh, the government in terms of making sure universal health coverage is reachable, affordable, and accessible to the 47 million Kenyans, and also how we can be able to integrate all the hospitals in this country through telemedicine. Let us also see how 
we can also uh, benefit uh, within industrialization, uh, manufacturing, take opportunities within the special economic zones, uh, in, uh, the industrial parks that also the government is putting up, and also the incentives that they are giving. So we as a chamber are here to unlock that potential for you, to discuss with you, and to take questions from you, and then from now on, we shall work with you together. With those few remarks, uh, I wish also, uh, before I forget, just to also invite you, which I'll talk about uh, much later, about the upcoming uh, functions and events and opportunities available for you. One is the 2020 Expo, uh, Dubai Expo, which is uh, slated to take place in uh, October this year. It's going to take six months uh, in Dubai. We are inviting you as Kenyans to come and showcase your, uh, your, your potential to come and tell your Kenyan story, tell your story in the most humanly way so that you can have uh, the 25 million people who have registered to attend that expo uh, within the six months buy in and come and also invest and partner with you. As the chairman of the Great Lakes Region, a private sector forum that forms 12 countries, I have also uh, in partnership with the United Nations uh, you know, arranged uh, uh, an international conference uh, which will take place in Kigali, Rwanda in March 18th and 20th. And again, we want you to take the space. We want you to come and also showcase uh, your products, also take advantage of uh, the people and the companies that we have invited across the world who will be showcasing their products there. It is the day that we have invited uh, the 12 heads of states to come and also share with us on how we can also plug in and how we can be able to trade between our countries and reduce conflicts within our borders and also reduce the non-tariff barriers as well so that our products, our markets in agriculture, uh, those that you're also inventing within the Juakali sector, you can be able to also get those markets. Our market here is still not enough. We are trying as much as possible to make sure you integrate between the 47 counties. And uh, over and above that, we look at the East African community, where again, the market is large. So within the Great Lakes region, we have a 400 million uh, population that also can, uh, you know, be able to uh, use your products. And therefore, that is a huge market for all of us as we prepare ourselves for the African continent of free trade area. Thank you very much. Uh, I wish you a good morning and good deliberations. Uh, this juncture, I wish to hand over back to the... Yes, so Asante Nisana. May God bless you. That's Richard Ngatia, the chamber president. I think the chamber is very critical in this uh, collaboration. I think just one or two comments from his speech. He talked about the digital economy. The digital economy is creating new opportunities. So let us focus on that area because that is a growing area. That's a growth area where we have new opportunities that can actually provide us with the employment that we are looking for. Now, a very important aspect which uh, fits within the purpose for the Nation Media Group, and that's one of uh, uh, transforming society in a positive way. This is part of what Nation Media Group exists to do, to transform society in a positive way. Now, collaboration between government and industry came up very strongly. There's no way this country will grow if we don't work with government. The private sector and the government must work because we are serving the same person we have the same objective and therefore we should collaborate and deliver our objectives jointly. Now, it is my humble opportunity to invite our chief guest to give his keynote uh, address. Dr. Fred Matiangi is a strong supporter of this collaboration and an advocate for the SME sector. So clap and let us welcome, for, welcome our chief guest. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gitagama. Uh, my good friend, uh, Dr. Wilfred Kiboro, the chairperson of the board of the Nation Media Group, uh, Bwanangatia from the National Chamber of Commerce, and all of you wonderful people, including my colleagues from government who are here this morning. Uh, Dr. Kiboro, I am very happy that you've advised me that I should start thinking about what I'll do when I retire, start a small business, a banana processing, value addition, 
a carpentry of some kind. Um, I have a challenge, and I have to be very sincere with you about it. The reason why you cannot see many of my colleagues here is because we are supposed to be seated at 10.30 in a bilateral with the German president who, who is in town. And uh, that doesn't give us enough time to do justice to the discussion that we have this morning. So here is the deal, uh, Mr. Ngatia. I'll make some brief remarks uh, this morning. And uh, if you give us one hour tomorrow uh, during your program, I will organize and see if I can get a panel of my cabinet colleagues, about five of us. We come and sit here. Uh, <clears throat> so that we answer questions. Uh, those of you from the private sector we have interacted with before, I have said it and let me say it again. What frustrates me about what we do uh, now, our interactions between public and private sector, we always are adopting this touch and go attitude and, and we will never do anything with touch and go. No, we're just running around making speeches here, speech there, speech the other place. And we never get time to sit down and listen to the people who actually matter, who are the people we govern, and who are the people who are running this economy, who are yourselves. Uh, so I would like, if you don't mind, I want to ask the organizers of this meeting. Uh, between now and tomorrow morning, I will organize a panel. Because uh, under executive order number one, I am the coordinator of the cabinet committee. So I'll see whether I can get a panel of five of my colleagues. We sit up here for about an hour or two hours and listen to the issues and take up the issues that we are being raised here today so that we can have a sustainable and, uh, and meaningful conversation on where we are taking this sector. That way, I also believe we'll be able to support our president better because this is a sector that is very close to our president's heart. Our president has poured all his interest and focus into this sector. It is now our responsibility to carry forward uh, his objectives uh, on what he wants to do with the SME sector in the country. And actually, that's why, I'm, uh, Dr. Kiboro, I came this morning with uh, my colleagues from the Office of the President, including from the Presidential Delivery Unit, and I will let them sit here, including our Secretary for the Presidential Delivery Unit, to sit here through the day and get notes for us. And then I'll get my colleagues so that we sit up here uh, tomorrow and answer all your questions and face you because you are the ones who pay us a salary every month uh, so that we respond to some of the issues that we need to deal with, uh, as it were. So if that is agreed, or if that's agreeable with you, let me first of all start uh, my brief remarks by first of all thanking the Nation Media Group. I've often said, uh, and you can flippantly say, well, they are doing it because of business. It's not true, actually, because the total effect of this collaboration between the Nation Media Group and uh, the National Chamber of Commerce uh, is ultimately going to lead to expanding the space for conversation and creating an opportunity for us to work better and do better. My colleague, the Deputy Head of Public Service, Mr. Wanyama Musiambu, who's with me, and has been leading the multi-agents team in our uh, and counterfeit uh, program, uh, will benefit a lot from your insights on what we have been trying to do in fighting counterfeit uh, uh, goods uh, in our environment. And, and we do not take it for granted that a private sector investor like the Nation Media Group has taken it upon it themselves to organize a meeting of this kind in collaboration with the National Chamber of Commerce. It is partnerships like this, private sector, business and government. This tripartite relationship is what will take our country to the next level. So, Chairman Nation Media Group, I want to thank you very sincerely and hasten to assure you from the part of government that we will work with you, we will support you, we will summon all the good and capacity of government to try and work with you to grow business. The business of government is to support business. We do not have enough jobs to give to our people. We will not run this economy without businesses thriving. And therefore, our foremost obligation, our foremost responsibility as government is to support business. That is why our president has focused on the SME sector now as the engine that is going to drive growth, that's going to drive 
expansion of our economy, the environment that employs most of our people, the sector that actually bears our greatest hope and the greatest hope for this economy as we move forward. So we will pull all the stops. I have taken the notes that you have said. For example, it's true, actually, even we are looking at the regulatory environment uh, in the SME sector to try and see how we can harmonize regulation uh, in the SME sector to make it easier uh, for doing business. We've done very well, even if I say it so myself, as government on the World Bank Index uh, of ease of doing business. But we would like to do even better as we move forward, especially when it comes to supporting the SME sector as we go forward. Secondly, I want to deliver this commitment from the part of government that we remain focused on supporting uh, local manufacturers, the SMEs who have invested here. My colleagues at the Ministry of Public Works are under instructions, and I hope I'll get Kealangwa uh, PS to be here uh, tomorrow, to confirm to you that after the president instructed us as government to now start buying goods from local companies, we've been working on the list of 100 goods that government should buy directly from local manufacturers, especially the SMEs. We have even been working on looking at the public procurement and disposal law to ensure that we provide an opportunity where we can ring fence procurement by government of goods and services from local service providers. That is how we will grow our SMEs. And, and already the work has started. I mean, I, I don't have to go back to how many wars I fought last year about police uniforms because of the fact that that is how we will grow local industry. The president has given the directive on Kenya made dress Friday for all public servants. Uh, and I'm sure there are some of my colleagues in government who have discovered Kenyan tailors in Nairobi and elsewhere recently because of the president's insistence that every Friday as public servants we should look for Kenya made uh, dress wear uh, as we go forward. I am even trying to extend that to the chiefs and assistant chiefs so that on Friday is the only day they can be allowed to operate without uniform, uh, but as long as they actually wear Kenya made clothing, as it were. So that in implementing the president's directive, we are trying to begin catalyzing a conversation on how we support our industries, as it were. Number three, uh, it's true that we could have a credit squeeze or a challenge in resources. But Dr. Kiboro, frankly speaking, these days, and then I want to say this advisedly, we are awash with money for SME sector. I wash with money because whether you talk about the MasterCard Foundation, the Starwi that the president launched about two uh, weeks ago, uh, we are ring fencing funds from almost every support program targeted at loans and facilities being available for the SME sector. The challenge may be A, if we harmonize the regulatory environment and make it easier to access the resources, or B, educated and build the capacities of these institutions so that they can access these resources and make good use of, of, of the resources, or even three, uh, expand this access to rural parts of, of, of Kenya, as it were. And this is a challenge we would like to listen to you on. How do we ensure that the uptake of these resources that are available now for the SME sector is going to be accelerated, as it were? Because if you look at actually between MasterCard Foundation, Starwi, and so on, we are talking of over 60 or so billion shillings available uh, for loans, for facilities to support the SME sector, as it were. Now is the time to smoothen the way for the access uh, uh, to these resources, to build the capacity of the sector to take full advantage of these resources that are available as we move forward. And we are ready. I mean, of course, not to talk about the resources that we are now pouring into constituents, uh, market, and innovation centers, as it were. The, the government has invested in big markets. What we are doing in Kariako, what we are doing in uh, Gikomba, in Dagoreti, and uh, in uh, Chaka, and so many of these places where we are beginning to pour money into developing infrastructure to support SMEs, as it were. And I can see both in this financial year and even the budget uh, outlook paper that we have just sent to Parliament, 
we are again still focused because the president is insisting this is the future of this economy. We are again putting more money to building infrastructure to support the SMEs as we go forward. This is very fundamental. But sometimes, maybe actually, quite genuinely, our people may not be knowing that these things actually exist and we are doing these things. So that's why the involvement of Nation Media Group is very important in my view. And working with players in the communication sector is very fundamental. I can't thank you enough for coming on board because this way then, whatever plans we are working on and activities are going to be amplified, the levels of awareness are going to be raised, and that way then we can maximize on the benefits of these decisions and these policy actions that government has taken. Fourthly, I know we have a challenge that we have been dealing with, uh, you know, and the challenge is usually government payments, you know, delayed government payments, uh, both national and county government. This is an area, again, where our president has given firm instructions. I can tell you boldly here, we have cleared about 70% of the burning bills. But the burning bills are a story of their own, and, and, and when I get time, hopefully tomorrow, by the grace of God, I would like to challenge you as the SME sector to join the president's war against corruption. Because we are spending a lot of time on the demand side of corruption, but we are not addressing the supply side of corruption. Because, you see, we can work very hard, and we are not going to shark. We will continue on this path. But it's important that we are joined by you as players in this sector, because we all get hurt when all this monkey business continues. But it's good that we collaborate and work on this. Some of the bending bills we are dealing with, for example, historical bending bills in government, the classic example is what happens in a department that uh, I run called prisons, uh, bills that have been burning since 2009 until uh, uh, 2016, total of about 6.2 billion in bills. When you analyze the bills, it just astounds you at the creativity of theft. You know, you, you, you wonder if we actually applied the amount, that amount of energy uh, you know, in, in, in generating wealth and doing clean business, we would be very, very successful. So that as we clean up, because now the president has instructed that no government department will cross over the new financial year with a shilling in terms of burning bills. If you are burning bills, you will suspend even your own salaries and pay them before you go to Jan July 1. That's the instruction we have from the president. So every one of us is working hard to clean books. But as we do so, we need your support to deal with the supply side of corruption and how it affects you, knowing as we must that it, it hurts all of us in the process. When I look at the bending bill from prisons department that indicates that one supplier in two years supplied stationary to the prisons department, what the 65 million? What would the inmates have been writing and using stationary for <laughs> to accumulate and spend 65 million, as it were? And when you look at that, I mean, that is stationary for how many schools in this country? And, and this person is busy saying, pay me, you owe me money. And there have been questions that have been raised by internal auditors, by the Auditor General, by the Public Accounts Committee in Parliament, and the DCI and the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commissioner are on these things. This is madness we brought upon ourselves, both from the supply side and from the demand side. We will do our part, and you have seen the resolve of our President on dealing with this from the demand side. Now is the time for you also, as the players, because this Buy Kenya, Build Kenya plan that we have is going to come a cropper if we actually do not become vigilant and we do not support it. This is the only country where people are not excommunicated, even from the organizations, by being, for being corrupt. I'll be very happy, Mr. Ngatia, the day the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce says, if your company is mentioned by the Auditor General and if your company is mentioned by the Public Accounts Committee, will delist you from the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce. The, the, the day you start giving those threats, and you say in your membership organizations, the ethical values we are talking about, so that you don't say that until you are arrested, you can carry on with this madness, as it were. Go around the, count, the counties and see the kind of things that are going on there. It takes two to tango. The government will do its part, and I promise you we are going to do our part. But on your part also, do that something that you have to do. We would like to see organizations uh, live through what they are asking us to do also. Uh, start by delisting from your organizations these fictitious people 
who are selling air to government. Because when they go to sell air to government, they have collaborated with public servants, but they themselves are the suppliers of the air. So they are the suppliers of the corruption, as it were. So, so, so let's work together on this matter as we go forward. Second last, I want to assure you the war on counterfeit will continue. We have ratcheted up this even more, especially because of the nexus between the war on counterfeit and uh, terrorism in our country. I said it before, I do not mind repeating it again. The supplier of counterfeit goods, especially on our northern routes, is direct revenue to Al-Shabaab and the terror organizations. It's as simple as that. And it hurts us in multiple ways. Hurts our industry, hurts innovation, and, and then of course puts money in the hands of the wrong people, as it were. So we will continue to be very tough on this. Our colleagues in the law enforcement sector are now focused on dealing with this matter. We are tackling this problem, but we would do even better with your collaboration so that you are the ones who know some of these people who are pretending to supply things that are not genuine. And if you give us information, we will act on that information so that we protect innovation in our country, we protect our industry, and we protect ourselves as we go forward. Lastly, we will not succeed in the delivery of the big four if we do not put all our energy and support in the SME sector. So, Dr. Kiboro, I'm taking you up on your challenge. I will put up an infrastructure through our coordination framework, uh, working with the presidential delivery unit. I am instructing the secretary right now to start working with you under this forum. Let's go ahead and hold this meeting annually. The next one, it will be a collaboration between you and ourselves directly, and we'll put resources in it. And just so that we work smart, I wouldn't like to go into a talk shop. At the end of this meeting, I would like us to develop a matrix of actions we have agreed we are going to do. Hold us to account. I'm ready to be held to account. Say when we met at KICC in March, this is what we agreed was going to be done. So the first presentation in our meeting next year should be a report card. Yeah, should be a report card. We take our report card and say, we agreed we are going to do A, B, C, D in town. Otherwise, you know, we'll continue to be good people who hold meetings. You know, good people who go to meetings all the time and make speeches and so on. And, and meetings are good. I have no problem with them. But no country has been developed by meetings. Countries are developed by actions, the things that people do as we move forward. So I'll get my colleagues in here tomorrow. A good number of us will come and spend about an hour or two We'll take your questions, respond to them. I'll get a few PSS to come along. And then at the end of it, I have volunteered the Secretary of the Presidential Delivery Unit to sit up with the National Media Group and the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce. This will become a tripartite effort. We'll generate a matrix from here of actions that outlines exactly what we are going to agree to do. If it is going to be harmonization of um, uh, uh, policies, what exactly do we mean and how we are going to go forward? We will throw ourselves into it. Just last week on Thursday, we had a meeting with the governors and we were bleeding with them. Fortunately, we actually struck an agreement, another one that I would like to pursue, which is to the benefit of all of us. Harmonization of the sales rules across the country. The madness going on all over the place. If you carry goods from here to Kisumu, you will pay sales here, pay sales in Akuru, pay in, in Kisumu. By the time you get to Kisumu, there's no business you are doing anyway. All your profit is wiped. Everything is gone. Devolution is a fantastic thing. We want it to succeed. But we must implement it with our brains working. We can't just implement it in a manner that doesn't help us. We must implement it in a manner that helps all of us as we go forward. And fortunately, the governors agreed that we work on it this way. So we can include that also, harmonizing levies and sales as we go forward. And no one pays a greater price for this than SMEs across the board. So why don't we start working on regimes where we give a, a moratorium, we give exemptions to certain levels of SMEs when it comes to sales and fees as a way of spurring growth in the sector so that we just put these fees together and sort them out. My friends, my last remark is that the beauty about human beings all around the world, the beauty about what God did with human beings is that there's no limit to what we can do to ourselves. And there's no limit to what we can achieve especially when we are driven by the singular focus of improving our lives and doing better. 
God has blessed us with a wonderful country. And most importantly, God has blessed us with an opportunity to organize ourselves, grow our economy, employ our people, and develop our country. So let's not waste any time. And, and forget about the positions we occupy in society, whether I am minister, you are SME, what have you. We are Kenyans. Let's seize this opportunity, come together, draw a plan, and do things that help our people, that will help this sector to grow and make sure that we work together. And you can count on us to do our best and to be uh, here with you every step of the way. So ladies and gentlemen, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Uh, we are available, ready and willing to do what we must to grow ourselves forward. May the Lord bless you. Let us clap for the CS again. I think that was very powerful, and uh, you could see the passion with the CS when he was discussing the issues of corruption. We all know corruption is a two-way. And then uh, he also talked about having this meeting annually. So I will do the report card when I see us, and we'll hold you to account, and we'll hold, and you also hold us to account. So by the end of the day, we expect the environment, and uh, we expect the Kenyans will benefit from this. Next, uh, when I see us, I'll just request you hold for one or two minutes. We want to tell you what else is uh, National Media going to do, Nation Media Group going to do. At the same time, I would like to invite our editor, Mr. Ngangambogwa, to tell us which product we're going to launch. And uh, I'll also, at this juncture, invite uh, Dan, one of, our, one of the NTV news anchors, to proceed with the next ceremony. It's a short ceremony. And then from there, we'll progress with the program as scheduled. So when I see us, please hold on for a minute, then as we proceed. Thank you. Nanga. Thank you, mm. Mr. Kitagama. Our chief guest, uh, Mr. C.S. Matiangi, our partners, KNCCI, our guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm here to represent our editorial director, Mr. Mutuma Matthew, who was not able to make it due to another commitment. I would like only to mention in passing that the Business Daily has been working with SMEs for the last 12 years. And each year, we pick 100 of the best, and we call them the top 100 SMEs in Kenya. And we do this in partnership with KPMG. That means, we have celebrated 1,200 SMEs in the last 12 years. And out of those, for every SME that makes it to the top 100, there are nine that don't make it. That means between us and our partners, we have more than 15,000 SMEs in our database. Out of the winners, 52 have graduated to Club 101. That means they have annual revenues of over 1 billion shillings. Today and this year, the Nation Media Group has decided to take the conversation forward and make it bigger and better. The first step that we have taken is today's conference, which lasts today and tomorrow in partnership with the Kenya National Chambers of Commerce and Industry. We will hold forums like this throughout the eight economic blocks in the country, and it will culminate in a major summit to be held in November this year. It's now my pleasure to invite our chief guest, uh, C.S. Matiangi, to officially launch uh, the groundbreaking pullout that we are going to be publishing every week in the Daily Nation to give SMEs a voice, to celebrate SMEs, and to showcase the work that they are doing. Please welcome C.S. Matiangi. And I will give him two jobs to launch the pullouts and also to officially open the conference. You can join one and Natia. You can join the um, and then uh what you would like us to do?
So this is the first edition of the SME Pullout. Every week we'll be having something like this to celebrate SMEs. And as you are aware, most of the SMEs in Kenya are family-owned businesses to showcase the challenges that they are facing, the opportunities available to them, and how we can help them to grow. Mr. Gitagama is basically agitating me to say, but, but this is really fantastic. I mean, I want to thank Nation Media Group for doing this. That, and, and this is it's not good just for business. It's good for all of us. That, that, that is it. And as I've always said, you at Nation Media Group, you are a signature brand for our country, and that's why we pay attention to your welfare, because we know that when you do as well as uh, you are doing, you're actually doing it for the country also and for the growth of our economy. We thank you for doing this, and uh, this is a trail blessing, and we're happy to be associated with it. And, and with it, therefore, I declare this uh, conference officially open. Thank you. So, Dan? Thank you very much, Bonasias, and the CS, alongside some of the dignitaries we have here, are going to be touring some of the stands, like we have had. It's a very hands-on thing. It's a very practical thing. So this event in itself is not just about, like he said, the talk shop, where we're going to have the discussions on the panels and on the podium, but we're also going to be having the tour in the stalls. There are some stalls that have been set up on the other side of this wall. And some of those that he is going to be visiting include, let me just read the list, Zamara, Popotepe, Broadrange, Thicker Cloth Mills, Leather Masters, Aromakare, Ngokamka, DK Engineering, Gulf African Bank, so those are some of the stores that the CS is going to be passing by to see what is happening in as far as the kind of products they're putting out and the kind of issues they're raising. And we appreciate the commitment that he has made to have some of his colleagues from cabinet here tomorrow to respond to the specific issues that you as the business persons in this country have. And we shall be facilitating that. Um, so so by the time they come, you can have your issues addressed directly. And shortly after this, we are going to be having a, our first panel discussion to address the different issues that have been raised and that are in the, alive in the sector. And so this will be in a few minutes right after the brief tour of the stalls um, is over. And like I said, some of those that he's going to be going through are Zamara, that is a, an organization that provides pension uh, services. And it's been a concern that not many people prioritize pension, especially in light of the economy we are in. People feel it is not that much of, an, um, of a priority. Aside from that, there's also Popotepe. We also have broad range, thicker cloth mills who are pretty big on the pushing of build, buy Kenya, build Kenya. Uh, we've been told here that some, most of the clothes here probably are made in other countries and not in Kenya, yet we have the capacity and the resources to do that. However, issues such as cost of production come into play here. We also have Leather Masters, and we've got the Secretary General of uh, the Leather Association who's with us here today, and she'll be on one of the, one of the panels, as well as Aromakare, Ngokamka, DK Engineering. We know that engineering... With, uh, brings with it job creation, a lot of job creation. Um, and we'll be having a discussion just to find out as jobs are moving away from being very hands and you know physical and it's moving to be more computerized or mechanized, are people being trained enough 
to take up these jobs as they come up. And we also have Gulf African Bank, where he'll be passing by as well, where we'll be having the issues to do with financing. One of the biggest challenges for SMEs, as you are likely to bear testimony to, is that funding becomes a challenge. And so, as the CS continues with his tour, we shall take a small break on the live broadcast, and we'll be back with uh, the panel discussion. We'll have a panel discussion. The first one, we'll have three of them today just to have different dynamics of the same, and we'll be having representatives both from government and out of government to be speaking here. So we take a short break on the live broadcast on NTV. We'll be back in a few minutes to carry on with the discussions at the KICC on this SME conference and expo.